Oh, this is a good one. God gave this some fresh just with a cup of coffee. I mean, God really speaks to you in some really weird ways sometimes. But Kristen got this email and she sent it to me. And I just happened to be when I found it drinking a cup of coffee. The message is called Soldiers in Your Cup. Now that sounds a little on the weird side, but listen to this. Sometimes we don't understand all the words and the way they're spoken. We take things out of context. Sometimes we say things without thinking. And we don't know what children are hearing, or we don't know what our neighbors hearing from the things that we say. Because a lot of times we say things that just kind of fly out of our mouth and it wasn't what we meant to say, or we wish we hadn't said it. But here's the little story she sent me. One morning, the grandmother was surprised to find that her seven-year-old grandson had made her coffee. Smiling, she choked down the worst cup of coffee in her whole life. When she finished, she found three little green army men in the bottom of the cup. Puzzled, she asked, Honey, what are these little green army men doing in my coffee? Her grandson answered, like it says on TV, Grandma, the best part of waking up is soldiers in your cup. <laughs> That's what we do. We get the words wrong a lot of times of what somebody else says. And when we get out here and we listen to what people say, we sometimes don't realize what children hear. My daughter, you remember the old big wheels? That big plastic wheel on the front that sat on the low? She was sat in the yard one day and she was drinking a dog of pepper. She cranked that bed back on there like this and she said, Here, Mom, hold this because drinking and driving can kill a friendship. <laughs> Kids pay attention. And they hear these things. Sometimes they're a little out of context. But people do that too. We as adults, we hear things and we hear them that are not exactly right. And when we repeat them and they weren't right in the first place, who knows what the story's going to be when we get done with it. But Dr. Elmer Towns, who's a professor uh, down at Liberty University, and he also teaches a Bible class every Sunday morning. But his idea about words, he said that, that they teach two things. For your destiny, change your heart and your words will change. For your character, change your words and your heart will change. So it's all what we do. What's got to do is come from your heart. If we get a let our heart sour on us, then we can speak nothing but bad. We let our heart speak good things. And we'll find a lot of good in life. I know I've told you this before about the little old lady at the funeral. She'd always say something great about somebody. Every funeral, anytime somebody died, she was there. And finally, the biggest grudge in town, nobody liked it. He finally, he passed away. And everybody just was on pins and needles. What is this old lady going to say about this guy? Because there's nothing good about him. And she walked up and she looked down in that casket and she says, he was a good whistler. There's something good to find in everybody. The best part of it is it's our mouth that can say it. And it ought to be coming from our heart. The words that people use are something that will express the character. That will express who you are. I mean, how many people? I know a fellow that just absolutely just couldn't stand to be around him. Because I'm not sure that he was as frequent as every other word swearing. He may abuse two sometimes in between a good word. 
But that's all that thought of. But you just knew that was going to happen. And you hate to be around him. And that's what that character we can express in what we say, what we say about people, the attitudes that we take. You know, I know there for a while it seemed to me like that I, I caught myself whining about everything wrong. Um, my finger hurts today, and my knee hurts tomorrow, right? And, and, and this didn't work out right, and that didn't work out right. And you got yourself into such a negative attitude that people didn't want to be around you. You know, you'd go fishing, and, and the fish didn't even want to bite the hooks. You know, they, they could sense it one night on the other end of the line. I really believe that. But I mean, we could get that bad. That, that we just don't express ourselves. It's how we, the attitude we have. Well, God, um, we'd like for you to, you know, we'd like to pray for so-and-so. And, you know, I know you're busy, and if you don't have time, God, thank God. We've got to have the attitude to say, God, we know it's going to happen. Let's look at Matthew uh, chapter 12 and verses 33 to 37. Now this is what Jesus is speaking and Jesus is saying this. He said, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. He said, or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. We know what an apple tree is from a peach tree. We didn't mind what chop that apple tree down because it never has good apples. We recognize a tree by the fruit. And it says, you bring the vipers, he's talking to the Pharisees, it's always fine and called and everything. It says, how can you, who are evil, say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you, that men will have give account on the day of judgment for every careless word that they have spoken. For by your words you'll be acquitted and by your words you'll be condemned. That's pretty strong stuff. God sitting there, Jesus is sitting here saying by your words you'll be acquitted. By your words you'll be set free. Or by your words, you'll be condemned. Now, I'm not talking about just the serious things that we see about going out and talking to somebody and saying, well, we need to clean up your speech and that'll fix your problem. Or, you know, Jesus says that whatever's in your heart determines what you're going to say. If we got Jesus in our heart, that's going to determine what we say and how we say it. Sometimes we can get a little negative and say, well, there was talking about things that were not really so, and how we tell those little white lines, or we fear just a little. How many have ever heard this one? The check's in the mail. How many have ever heard this one? Open wide, it's not going to hurt. But we tend to, to, to fib a little bit. We tend to exaggerate, you know, and, it, and it's like, you know, sometimes my arm might be hurting and the wife says, how's your arm? And I said, it's fine. Because at the particular minute that she said that, it was fine. So a little before that, it was hurting like crazy. But we fib and we exaggerate. Tommy's back her laughing, he's done the same thing. <laughs> But we fib and we exaggerate. Right? We all been there. We all know what I'm talking about. And then the one that really makes it better is I didn't fib, I just rearranged the words. Does that sound good? Does that chew fit? 
we just rearrange the words and we'll make it better. At least in our own mind it will sound good. Let's look at James chapter 3 and verses 1 to 12. And this talks about, James is talking about taming the tongue. It starts off, not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach are be judged more strictly so that we all stumble in many ways. If anyone's never fought, then what he says, he's a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. That's a pretty strong statement. If you can control what you say, you can keep your whole body in check. You don't think about the tongue being that powerful. It says when we put the bits into the horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or we can take the ships as an example. Although they're so large and they're driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. It makes great boats. Consider what a forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed, and have been tamed by man, by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we can praise our Lord and Father, and with it we can curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. Our brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives? Or a grape vine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. God saying that both can't come out at the same time. Gotta be fresh water. But you gotta be salt water. Sometimes we forget that God's listening. And sometimes we forget that the kids are listening. There was a, I remember this from school, probably about the third grade, the teacher read this poem, and it was, I'm pretty sure, by Emily Dickinson. It said, Sticks and stones may break the bones. But silence breaks the heart. How many times have you been in a situation where somebody just didn't say anything? And, and then another one. Sometimes we just think out of necessity that we have to say something. I've always thought it strange at a funeral, to hear somebody walk up and say, you've just lost your father, and they say, I know how it feels, and their dad's standing right there beside them. How can you say that you know how somebody feels that's just lost their father, or their mother, or their brother or sister, if you haven't lost them? You can't know how they feel. It's useless words. If you can't say something good, if you can't say something positive, don't say nothing. Contradictory speech is something that's just so overflowing. We can go out here anywhere and you listen to two people in a conversation and somebody's going to correct the other one before the conversation's over. One time, our words are pleasing to God. The next minute, they're not pleasing. It's like the fresh water and the salt water. 
they both came to flow out of the same spring. You've got to have one or the other if you're going to please them to God. It's our tongue. Our tongue and this great big body, this little tiny tongue, is what steers us. Our tongue is what reflects our sinful nature. So many times I've seen people, if they can't figure out any other way to hurt somebody, they'll say something nasty. They'll just say something nasty. What we need to work on is making certain that what people hear is what we want them to hear. Something good. We need people to see that reflection of Jesus in us. We can't reflect Jesus in it. If somebody runs the stoplight and we got our arm out going to shake our fist at them because we never run into them. That happened Saturday. I had to jump on the brakes while I run into this individual. And I pulled up behind him, pulled into the yard sale, and I thought, no, I'm not going to say anything. Because they'll just say they did. And I'll say they did. God has what they did. Sometimes we just need to let it go. The question tonight is, is the best part of waking up? Is it soldiers? Or is the best part of waking up? Being real. Saying the things that Jesus wants us to say. Doing the things that Jesus wants us to do. Let's pray. Father God, we just pray that you'll help us to tame our tongues. Father, that the work that our tongue does, it's like that rudder that steers a mighty ship. But Father, let it steer us. Father, that people can see Jesus in us. Father, that we can stand up, that we can live our life of glow with your Son's Spirit. Bless us, O oh Lord. Father, help us to stop and think. Father, help us not to use useless and wasted words. We've got some 800,000 words in our dictionary, in our English language. 300,000 of them are technical words. But Father, we pick out of the 500,000 that's left some 5,000 words a day. Father, help us to sort that 5,000 into good words. Be with us now, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Oh, Father, for the prayers of an answer. And Father God, let us ask you one more thing while we got you. Father, will you help our leaders? And Father, the decisions that they make on Syria. Father, we pray that they'll consult you. And not that it'll be out of words, but they'll listen to what you tell them. In Jesus' precious name. Tonight, Lynette is here.